Okay, let's, let's get started, I think. All right, uh, thank you very much and, and welcome back. Uh, and I, ha I hope you had a, first, uh, a good uh, first coffee break and uh, networking opportunity. Um, and uh, sorry to cut that short, but uh, let's, let's carry on. Uh, uh, and without further ado, I would like to uh, call upon the chair of our implementation and assessment committee, um, Pepe Lopez, to t take us through uh, the work of the IAC. Thank you. Uh, hi, good afternoon. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, I'm not going to try to say the word in Luxembourgese. Uh, probably I can say in Spanish. Uh, buenas tardes. <laughs> and um, well, uh, first I, I want to thank our, our host for this excellent venue. I mean, this is marvelous. Uh, this conference room and the other ones that uh, we, I have been in, they are really marvelous. So thank you very much. The place is, is just excellent. Thank you very much. Club. And um, well, I am pleased to give an update on the activities of the Implementation and Assessment Committee, which is, I mean, probably the most difficult job about all committees. Just, uh, Jonathan was the previous chair on the Implementation Committee, so I have all his overlook saying, please don't mess it up with all the, what I did, so, so it's quite a, a, a difficult job. But um, while following the adoption of, of the new uh, committee structure that was effective on January 2018, the Implementation and Assessment uh, Committee succeeded from the Implementation Committee. And this is, I mean, it's not just changing the name of the Implementation Committee, it's, it's like a, a whole new framework, and, uh, and probably I don't know, but probably it should have been the Assessment and Implementation Committee because before implementing, you have to assess on where you are. So that's, that's one of the big uh, changes that, that, that were made. Um, so um, uh, basically, and, and uh, it was requested by the ex, uh, Executive Committee uh, in the beginning of 2018, the Implementation Assessment Committee finished the IAS Coordinated Implementation Framework. Uh, the Coordinated Implementation Framework is really important. It supports an efficient design, delivery, and prioritization of implementation activity by setting out the IAS uh, must focus on, implement, uh, on, on implementation activities that build off its unique perspective as a global standard setting body work closely with regions and regional associations to understand and address challenges, leverage partnerships to address implementation needs, and lastly, embed the implementation perspective in our standard setting group. The coordinated uh, uh, implementation framework relies on four pillars, and, and I mean, the, the four of them are, are really, really important. The first one is the assessment and implementation uh, monitoring, and as, and, and as I, I, I was saying, it's for me, I mean, you cannot really know what you need unless you are assessed. And you have to be assessed, uh, unfortunately, by, by an external body, uh, I mean, by a third party. Uh, I, I mean, in, in, in my country, in, in Mexico, once we did uh, an internal assessment, and uh, I mean, we have been doing internal assessments since the first version of the ICPs. But uh, we were quite happy about uh, our internal assessment, and, and this was probably in 2016, just preparing for the FSAP. And uh, we made a, a self-assessment with the IAS. It, it was on, on uh, the principles related with uh, information sharing. And uh, in the internal assessment, we had like this really uh, <coughs> completely observed internally. And then we went to the IAS with the previous self-assessment and peer review process, and, and, and we got a partly observed version. And we said, but come on, I mean, we have been, uh, we signed the MMOU, and everything is in place, 
And, and actually, it was Carol Lynn from the Secretariat, and she told us, well, it's because in the, in the assessment, we um, discovered that uh, a request of information, it took you just three months to send the response. And I said, oops, yeah, you're right, so we cannot be completely observed if it takes three months to respond to something. So, so assessments are, are really important. And, and, and part of this uh, uh, coordinated implementation framework comes from uh, uh, the, the, the IMF retiring from, from the FSAPs or not having the sufficient um, time and, and, and resources to make assessments. So we as insurance supervisors need assessments from, from somebody. And here's what the IAS comes in. And, and well, I, I will be speaking a little bit on, 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 on where we are going and what our work is, 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 is going in that direction. And the supervisory capacity building, of course, you need um, capacity. And, uh, and, and, and well, the IAS executes its role with uh, its implementation partners. Uh, I, I mean, the, the, the Access to Insurance Initiative and the, uh, and, and, and the IMF and um, for effective uh, supervision of global insurance industry. We promote supervisory cooperation and information exchange amongst members uh, through the multilateral uh, memorandum of understanding. And this is a, a basic tool, the, the MMOU. I mean, this is, a, 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 I would say, a no-brainer for us regulators to sign the MMOU. I, I mean, instead of signing like memorandums of understanding with every uh, single jurisdiction you have uh, relations, you only sign once. And, and you will need to sign this, uh, this uh, memorandum and, and these memorandums and, and because you will share information. I mean, at least in the insurance world, the insurance world is, is, is it's, it's getting really close. I don't know if in other sectors, but at least in the insurance, it's, it's, it's getting really close. And, and we have uh, companies from all around the world in our jurisdictions, so we need this uh, information sharing. I mean, it's part of our supervisory process. And um, so we promote supervisory cooperation, information exchange amongst members through this uh, MMOU and uh, to meet uh, the objective of the ICPs, also the IAS, the, the fourth pillar, uh, develops application paper and issues papers with its implementation partners, as I said, the Financial Stability Institute and the Access to Insurance Initiative. And the um, assessment and implementation monitoring. Well, uh, under this uh, new IAS committee structure, uh, there was created the Standard Assessment Working Group, which is uh, led by William Mason from Gersey, and, and probably he has one of the most difficult uh, jobs here at the IAS because he has to find a way, and, and he's making some uh, pilots this year, on how to assure consistent and good assessments of jurisdictions, and we are a 140 members association, so we will have lots of demand on that. So he has really a, a big job. And the good thing is that they are trying with these pilot programs. There, there are two pilot programs, program, and, and he will know and, and he will, I mean, he and, and, and on all the people in this group, they will know how to make the things quite efficient. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. And um, well, in, in 2018, the IAS adopted a new approach to strengthen the IAS assessment program. It comprises uh, three different complementary assessment process, the peer review process, which is one of the three, which builds on the IAS previous ones, the self-assessment and peer review program to enhance the efficiency and effectiveness, the member assessment process, which is this payload I was talking about, is a comprehensive and intensive review of the IAS member's implementation of supervisory material to address the emerging assessment gaps, the self-assessment portal, which will be an online tool for members to undertake self-assessments on demand and receive immediate feedback. Uh, the PRP or, or the peer review process will continue over a pre period of the next uh, 
a strategic planning and financial outlook. This will provide an opportunity to monitor progress made by members. And, and, and this is also a very important uh, aspect of, of assessments. I mean, you can be monitoring your progress. And that's, that's, that's great. I mean, when you're moving from, from non-observed to observe to, to, to partially observe and, and, and then to observe, I mean, you feel good about that. So, so that's, that, that's great. And um, the new uh, M MRP or, or member review program will be piloted this year. Over time, this type of deep dive review could also be used as a horizontal assessment, uh, similar to that of the regulatory consistency assessment done by the uh, Basel Committee on Banking Supervision to assess consistency of implementation of um, Basel III requirements. And uh, in 2018, the IAS launched two assessments. One is pre-review process on supervisors and supervisory power, containing uh, ICPs one and two. Uh, nearly 70 IAS members participated, and public report of findings from this assessment is anticipated to be available in the summer of next year. The other is phase two assessment with a deeper dive into the liquidity management and uh, planning requirements and how these requirements are implemented in practice by group-wide supervisors. The expert team of this assessment is working hard analyzing the findings and drafting the aggregate report, which will also be available next year. And uh, the supervisory capacity building, uh, last year in Kuala Lumpur, we signed an agreement with the Access to Insurance Initiative and the um, uh, and, uh, International Association of Factories. And the key outcomes of these agreements are the development and delivery of supervisory uh, capacity building training programs to support supervisors making better use of actual information and services. And this is especially important for, for some emerging uh, jurisdictions that, I mean, there, we have some members that they don't have uh, actually as a, as a curriculum in their, in their universities. So having this building of capacity on actuarial services and on, on actuarial issues is, is, is going to help them a lot. And that's why uh, I believe that this partnership with the uh, International Actuarial Association and the, the, the part which will be implementing it, the Access to Insurance Initiative, it's probably one of the, of the best uh, agreements that the IAS have signed uh, um, ever, and, and, and probably it would be a, a great milestone. Uh, currently, we have uh, secured funding for the first year training program from the Department from International Development from the UK, which is, uh, which, uh, is a department that aims to promote sustainable development and eliminate uh, world poverty. Uh, in the first quarter of 2019, two actual training programs will be held, one in Mauritius in the Sub-Sahara uh, Africa region and the other in Trinidad Tobago in the Caribbean region. And uh, well, the IAS continues the project on updating the core curriculum to provide better understanding on concepts supporting the ICPs uh, and IAS supervisory material. This project has uh, two phases. The first phase was just uh, updating uh, the, the previous core curriculum to the new ICPs, just uh, avoiding some, uh, some, some concepts that uh, were not there. And uh, it has been a tremendous work. It has been uh, a work done by, by members of the association. Over 100 uh, people from the, from the association have worked in this, in this, in this core curriculum project. And, um, and it's already there. We have a, a web page for, for the core curriculum. Where, where supervisors can download this, this, this material for their own capacity. And uh, for three months, we have had uh, 1,400 visits to the portal of this uh, core curriculum. And there's a, a module, I, I, I don't remember right now, but it has been downloaded uh, like 900 times. So it's just a, a, big, uh, uh, a big project, uh, the need is there. And of course, uh, the next year we will start a phase two. In phase two, then we have, it's, it's, it's uh, a major project where we have to put this core curriculum in a much uh, 
uh, a smarter way, uh, reducing some modules and, uh, and, and being completely uh, alienated with, uh, I, I mean, in, in the same line as, uh, well, what uh, uh, PBC and BPC are doing, what have been done in the last year. So it's going to be a, a, a major program. Currently, there are 37 um, modules and one case study. And, uh, well, as, uh, as I said, uh, the web page was installed uh, last summer. And um, on the first one program, this is a program that uh, has been there for five years, over 210 participants from over 45 IA jurisdictions participated this uh, 2018. And uh, well, with uh, several regional organizations, the IAS uh, continues to support all the regional seminars that uh, deal with uh, several themes and, 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 uh, and, and insurance-related topics. More than 380 insurance supervisors have participated, and, and this not only gives uh, some uh, capacity building, but it also builds uh, networks between regions. And uh, as I was saying about the no-brainer, and uh, here I want to, to congratulate uh, the chair of the signatory working group, Michael Kerr, who has done a, a, an, an enormous job and this year, only this year, he, he achieved uh, gaining six new members signing the MMOU. These members are, um, uh, I have it here, but uh, it's uh, Jamaica, Russia, Oman, uh, Wisconsin, and um, I don't remember the, the other two. But now, within the MMOU, we have 70 signatories, and uh, more than 70% of the global premium is represented by this MMOU. So uh, this, this is a great tool where, where basically it helps all the supervisor in this information uh, sharing. On the um, uh, supervisory practices, uh, the, I, the IIC has expanded this mandate to include and strengthen the cooperation with the supervisory forum. This forum was established in 2011 to provide senior insurance supervisors with an opportunity to exchange information on supervisory uh, practices. This forum supports the broader work of the IAS through the provision of supervisory perspectives on current and proposed policy work and the production and dissemination of reports on topics of interest. In 2018, the IAS has published two application papers and two issues papers. Uh, the first two, the application paper on product oversight in inclusive insurance and the application paper on the use of digital technology in inclusive insurance provides guidance to supervisors, regulators and policymakers when considering designing and implementing regulations and supervisory practices on product oversight and the use of digital technology in inclusive insurance markets. Uh, the issues paper it also published the, the issues paper on climate change risk to the insurance sector. Uh, this is a joint uh, paper with a sustainable insurance forum from, uh, th that is uh, it's convened by the United Nations environment. And this paper provides an overview on how climate change is currently affecting and may affect the insurance sector now and in the future. Provides examples of current material risks and impacts across uh, underwriting and investment activities and describes how these risks and impacts may be of relevance for supervision and regulation of the sectors. Also, the issues paper on index-based insurance, particularly in inclusive insurance markets, provides descriptions and examples on how index-based insurances function are provided from both developed and developing market perspectives and focuses particularly on weather-related or natural catastrophes, uh, risk insurances, and an insurance supervisor seeking to enhance financial inclusions in developing markets. We are currently developing an application paper on proactive supervision of corporate governance to make supervisors aware of the need to act proactively and to provide additional guidance to supervisors on how to act in a proactive way. A draft paper will soon be released for public consultation uh, a public background session call of this draft application paper uh, will take place next November 15. Uh, 
Um, over the last year, together with our implementation partner, the Access to Insurance Initiative, we have made three consultative uh, forums, five consultation calls, two regional supervisory meetings, one supervisory dialogue, and two training workshops. More than 350 insurance supervisors coming from 80 countries have participated. In addition to this, the Access to Insurance Initiative piloted a new capacity building tool in the form of, uh, 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 of Inclusive Insurance Innovation Lab. This lab aimed at stimulating multi-stakeholder country teams to develop innovations in support of insurance market growth. The lab is a sequence of national and international workshops and is a direct response to requests from the insurance supervisors for support in helping them develop their markets. It has run successfully in, with 31 participants from four countries that participated. So um, a lot of work and projects were delivered over the last 12 months and keeps it uh, to be a, a really busy year. And um, for the future, what are the key themes for 2019? Well, we will continue on the implementation of our assessment tools, that's a peer review process, the member assessment process and the self-assessment portal, which will uh, surely be online. Uh, we will continue engaging on emerging issues, uh, basically supporting the FinTech Forum, that is a, a forum we, we have, uh, there has been talks about it uh, previously, but the, the, the good idea of, about this forum is trying to keep us up to date in a very difficult environment of keeping up to date related with, with uh, fintech issues. Also, we will be launching a small group addressing uh, cyber underwriting. Uh, we will continue our collaboration with the Sustainable Insurance Forum. And uh, of course, we will continue with uh, supporting effective supervisory practices through application papers and with uh, many interactions with the supervisory forum. Uh, we will continue enhancing capacity building through this uh, core curriculum update and uh, continue working with our key partners with basically the uh, Financial Stability Institute and the Access to Insurance to support this capacity building and of course enabling our supervisory cooperation through more signatories with the IAS MMOU and of course uh, while well, this is internal of the IAS, we will need many validators because if we're going to have many, sing, many, many jurisdictions signing uh, this MMOU, we also need uh, validators from, uh, from jurisdictions who have previously signed. And basically, that's all on the implementation part. So thank you very much, and I um, whilst I have the chance, want to say a very big thank you uh, to uh, the leadership of our main uh, parent committees, uh, because uh, it has been a huge um, commitment uh, and real leadership by all three of them in the past year. So, uh, and I, I know a lot of hard work, uh, and we wouldn't have been successful without the commitment. So thank you. Uh, right, let's move uh, straight into um, our open Q&A session. Um, I know, I guess everyone's been sitting 